His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Auditor General of the National Audit Office, the NAO, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, at Secure Palace. During the meeting, the NAO Auditor General presented His Royal Highness with the 21st NAO Annual Report for 2023 to 2024. His Royal Highness highlighted the NAO's efforts through its various reports in promoting the accurate and efficient management of resources while enhancing their sustainability to support the Kingdom's comprehensive development, led by His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness reaffirmed Bahrain's commitment to strengthening oversight, integrity and transparency across government operations and administration. This commitment aimed to support the implementation of various plans and programmes while ensuring the optimal use of resources. His Royal Highness acknowledged the efforts made to implement the report's recommendations, praising the NAO's efficiency as demonstrated in their audits and reports. His Royal Highness emphasised the importance of continually reviewing and analysing all observations concerning government agencies, ensuring that the necessary legal and administrative measures are promptly implemented in response to the NAO's report. His Royal Highness highlighted that all relevant parties must promptly address and rectify the observations, ensuring they are not repeated in the future. His Royal Highness noted that the efforts of the Team Bahrain form the foundation of the Kingdom's developmental achievements, aligning with the aspirations and vision of His Majesty. His Royal Highness emphasised the crucial role of regulatory bodies in boosting productivity and efficiency in the implementation of various strategies and projects, supporting the Kingdom's long-term aspirations. For his part, Sheikh Ahmed highlighted that the progress achieved by the NAO since its establishment is a result of the steadfast support of His Majesty and His Royal Highness. Sheikh Ahmed underscored the importance of addressing the directives to ensure the implementation of the recommendations and observations outlined in the NAO reports. He expressed his appreciation for the ministries and institutions under oversight for the cooperation which enabled the NAO teams to carry out their tasks efficiently and professionally. Sheikh Ahmed concluded by outlining the NAO's upcoming development plans and programmes, which include continued investment in human resources, expanding oversight services, particularly modern approaches such as investigative auditing, advancing digital transformation, leveraging technology efficiently and other initiatives. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal Al Malki, also attended the meeting. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, the SCYS, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the Council's final meeting of 2024. The meeting was attended by the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority, the GSA, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness congratulated His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa on Bahrain hosting the Asian Games. His Highness emphasised that this achievement as the successes of the prosperous era Bahrain is experiencing. He praised the continuous support of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as well as the pioneering steps taken by the government in support of the youth and sports sector in the Kingdom. He also congratulated His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad on the success of hosting the Gymnasia at Bahrain in 2024, which reflected the efforts exerted by the GSA. His Highness also praised the efforts that resulted in marking major sporting achievements and emphasised Bahrain's readiness to host the Asian and Arab Games. His Highness also congratulated the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Lamia's winning the Best Arab Government Project Award for Youth Empowerment as part of the Arab Government Excellence Award launched by the Arab League. His Highness praised the outcomes of the Global Hope Network, which was launched from Bahrain and aimed to unify global youth frameworks. The Council followed up on the indicators of the Bahraini Youth Empowerment Database in the public and private sectors, which indicate the creation of more opportunities for youth. The Ministry of Health highlighted the strategic projects and health sector initiatives to implement the National Strategy for Youth Empowerment and discussed health indicators for youth under the slogan, Healthy Lifestyle. His Highness directed the formation of a working group to study new programmes with the Ministry of Health to focus on youth health and support the Movement is a Blessing programme and youth bodies that contribute to youth health awareness. 
Tim Keane reviewed the opportunities offered to youth to improve employment rates as it showed a 33% increase in the number of youth beneficiaries compared to last year. It also reviewed its programmes that aim to develop the professional status of youth. The Ministry of Industry and Commerce also reviewed the current status of youth traders and discussed the details of commercial records by ownership, gender and type of activity. Based on the reports issued by the Ministry of Industry and Commerce in Tamkeen, the SEYS concluded its meetings with a directive from His Highness to establish a working group to follow up on existing efforts by the concerned institutions for educational and practical outputs. His Highness Lieutenant Commander Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended today the Joint Naval Exercise at Bridge 25. Concluded, conducted by the BDF, represented by the Royal Bahraini Naval Force, in collaboration with the Eastern Fleet of the Royal Saudi Naval Forces, the RSNF. His Highness affirmed that the long-standing ties enduring partnership between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia across various sectors. His Highness highlighted the unwavering support of the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, and the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud as well as His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Highness affirmed the advanced levels of cooperation and coordination between the two countries across all fields, particularly within military and defence. His Highness underscored the prominent contributions of the RSNF in safeguarding maritime security, noting that their efforts in coordination with Allied forces significantly contribute to consolidating regional security and stability. His Highness observed the exercise and its command and control operations, emphasising the value of joint exercises like Bridge 25 in enhancing coordination, integration and the exchange of expertise between the two naval forces. His Highness expressed his gratitude and appreciation to all participants of the Bridge 25 noting their efforts in completing their assigned tasks and wishing them continued success. The joint training is being held from the 1st until the 5th of December. The Representatives Council held its weekly session under the chairmanship of Speaker Ahmed Amasalam. The Council discussed two draft laws ratifying the agreement between the Government of Bahrain and the Governments of the UAE and Hong Kong on the elimination of double taxation in respect of taxes and income and the prevention of tax evasion. During the session, a number of proposals were also approved on exempting citizens from fees for the services of the General Directorate of Traffic. In addition, the Council discussed clarifying the Government's policy on the issue of dilapidated houses in which more than one family live. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, yesterday visited the Defence Medical Rehabilitation Centre in the UK, accompanied by the Ambassador of Bahrain to the UK, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and Assistant Under Secretary for Human Resources, Major General Adil Abdullah Amin. Upon arrival, the Minister was received by the Commander of the Centre, Claire Mehil, and a number of officials. The commander of the centre welcomed the visit of the minister, which comes within the framework of the relations between the two countries and their endeavours to enhance cooperation. For his part, the minister praised the historic relations and close partnership between Bahrain and the UK, noting their keenness to develop security cooperation and enhance the exchange of expertise and successful experiences to achieve common interests. He pointed out the Ministry of Interior's keenness to support its employees in appreciation of their dedication to maintain security and protect public safety. The Minister was briefed on the high medical and rehabilitation capabilities of the centre, where he visited the Technological Research Department, toured the Prosthetics Department and a number of the centre's facilities, praising its advanced services. He praised the capabilities of the centre, its expertise and high-level competencies, as well as its provision of all forms of care and rehabilitation, in accordance with internationally accepted medical and rehabilitation standards. The Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to the Centre's management and the role in providing distinguished services, noting the importance of developing joint cooperation and enhancing the exchange of experiences in rehabilitation.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, yesterday met with Jordan's Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Ayman Safadi in Cairo, on the sidelines of a ministerial meeting addressing humanitarian efforts in Gaza. They discussed a bilateral cooperation and historical fraternal relations between their countries, exploring the means to further enhance these ties for mutual benefit. Additionally, they exchanged views on the latest developments in the regional situation, including the ongoing war in the Gaza Strip and southern Lebanon, efforts to achieve a permanent ceasefire and strategies to reduce tension and escalation in Syria while protecting civilians. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, yesterday met with French Foreign Minister Jean Noël Barrow in Cairo. They discussed the close historical relationship between Bahrain and France, exploring ways to enhance bilateral cooperation across various domains. The ministers exchanged views on recent regional developments and challenges, including efforts to end the war in Gaza and South Lebanon, deliver humanitarian aid, de-escalate tensions in Syria, protect civilians and promote a lasting peace in the region. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, yesterday met with the Singaporean Minister of the Prime Minister's Office, Second Minister for Education and Second Minister for Foreign Affairs, Dr Mohammed Maliki bin Osman. The two sides discussed the strong relationship between Bahrain and Singapore and ways to enhance cooperation across various sectors. The meeting also reviewed regional developments and global challenges with a focus on efforts to end the Gaza conflict and advance initiatives aimed at achieving peace in the region. The Minister of Social Development and Chairman of the Higher Committee for the Welfare of Persons with Disabilities, Osama Al-Alawi, affirmed that Bahrain has achieved significant progress in supporting the rights of persons with disabilities under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. On the International Day of Persons with Disabilities, the Minister highlighted the Ministry's efforts to provide support and care for persons with disabilities, focusing on their empowerment and social integration. The Minister announced the launch of the National Strategy for the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which serves as a comprehensive national framework. He emphasised the Ministry's commitment to supporting persons with disabilities through collaboration with various governmental and private institutions, as well as civil society organisations within the framework of community partnership. Every year, the Kingdom of Bahrain celebrates the International Day of Persons with Disabilities through its accomplishments to achieve equality in all its forms. More in this report. Inclusivity in the Kingdom of Bahrain is considered an essential element of national development, as the Kingdom has always ensured equality among all, believing in the principle of providing equal opportunities for different segments of society and providing them with a decent life. Based on this, Bahrain has paid considerable attention to people with disabilities and valued the role they play as contributors to society and for supporting efforts to achieve sustainable development goals. The launch of the National Strategy for Persons with Disabilities is a testament to the Kingdom's plans which were initiated through supportive legislation and specific government and private sector initiatives related to persons with disabilities that aim to highlight their achievements which contributed to their development and raising community awareness. The Kingdom of Bahrain adheres to international standards for supporting people with disabilities and follows global and local visions in line with national aspirations to empower and value all individuals without discrimination to build a society characterized by equality, inclusivity and prosperity. The Arts Centre witnessed the opening of the Bahrain Art Society annual members exhibition in the presence of Chairman of the National Council for Art and the Rashid Al Khalifa Art Foundation, Sheikh Rashid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. 
President of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. President of the Bahrain Fine Arts Society, Sheikh Marwa bin Thrashid Al Khalifa. In addition to a large number of artists and those interested in cultural affairs. This year's exhibition celebrates the 40th anniversary of the Society's establishment, emphasising its pivotal role in developing and supporting the plastic arts movement in Bahrain. A total of 84 Bahraini artists participated in the exhibition, presenting works that vary between painting, sculpture, photography and multimedia, reflecting the richness and diversity of Bahraini culture. The exhibition, which runs until December the 15th, witnessed a large turnout of visitors. The Prime Minister's office hosted a graduation ceremony honouring the ninth intake of the Prime Minister's Fellowship Programme, marking the completion of their assignment at the PMO. The Director General of the Prime Minister's office, Hamad Al Mahmid, delivered a speech in which he highlighted that the programme embodies the ambitious vision of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He noted that the programme empowers the national workforce and strengthens its contributions to the Kingdom's comprehensive development, led by His Majesty the King. Al Mahmed uh, conveyed the greetings of His Royal Highness to the programme's beneficiaries, expressing His Royal Highness's pride in their efforts, which reflect their ambitions and loyalty to the Kingdom of Bahrain. He commended the fellows for their professionalism and teamwork uh, during their assignments at the Prime Minister's office, highlighting their role in advancing several government projects, programmes and plans. Al Mahmed also expressed his pride in the fellows' achievements, noting their positive impact on the programme. The Minister of Social Development, Usama Alalawi, then gave a speech on behalf of the committee overseeing the programme's alumni. Alalawi reiterated His Royal Highness's firm belief in upskilling the national workforce, which forms the basis for implementing national programmes and driving developmental initiatives in line with the visions of His Majesty the King. He highlighted the role of Bahrainis in furthering the Kingdom's economy and strengthening its regional and international economic competitiveness. Representing the graduates, Sadr Mohammed Saeed from Tamkeen also delivered a speech, expressing her gratitude for His Royal Highness's support of the programme. The Fellows emphasised the Fellows' commitment to applying the knowledge and skills they acquired during the programme. Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakro, headed Bahrain's delegation and participating in the 29th edition of the Partnership Summit 2024. The Minister stressed the importance of this summit in supporting the efforts of participating governments and countries in enhancing regional and international cooperation in various development fields. He pointed out India's role as one of the most important economic countries with a distinguished historical economic civilization. He expressing his hope that the summit will strengthen economic partnerships and form new frameworks for global economic cooperation. On the sidelines of the summit, the minister met with the Indian Minister of Commerce and Industry, Piyush Goyal, where they discussed opportunities for cooperation in industry, trade and investment. The final stage of the first GCC and Military Shooting Championship organised by the BDF will kick off tomorrow in the presence of National Security Advisor and Commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Lieutenant General Sheikh Nasbin Hamad Al Khalifa. 
For the final stage, the teams of Bahrain and the UAE qualify to the final round in the 40 metre submachine gun competition. And the teams of Bahrain and Oman qualified in the 20 metre pistol shooting competition for officers. In the warrior competition for officers, Major Mohammed Al Ghatan of Bahrain won first place. Major Ali Al Ghafri of the UAE won second place and Captain Assad Al Kalbani of Oman won third place. In the warrior competition for individuals, Corporal Ahmed Zarif of Bahrain won first place, Corporal Zaid Al Zahrani of Saudi Arabia won second place and Corporal Basha Awad of Bahrain won in third place. The championship received remarkable public and media attention as it is the first in the Gulf and held in the, for the first time in Bahrain. Hosting this championship is a translation of the considerable relation and consolidation of relations between the affiliates of the GCC's armed forces. It witnessed the participation of professional Gulf military shooters, which provides an ideal competitive environment to exchange experiences. During the prosperous era of His Majesty the King, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, with a follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister, and the support of BDF Commander-in-Chief, Bahrain made great strides in the sports field regionally and internationally. In an atmosphere of competitiveness and fraternity, and the qualifiers for the final stage of the first GCC military shooting championship, the gathering of military marksmen has strengthened the depth of Gulf cooperation and solidified close fraternal ties. The remarkable precision of the participants contributed to the championship success, which is held in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Bahrain Olympic Committee organised the first International Physical Literacy Conference in cooperation with the University of Bahrain and the International Physical Literacy Association, with the participation of 780 students and representatives of national federations and clubs. The conference comes within the framework of Bahrain's keenness to support the sports movement and move forward in implementing initiatives related to physical literacy. The conference, which discussed several working papers in its sessions, represents a valuable opportunity to meet experts and decision makers from different countries to discuss promoting health and physical awareness. Through the conference, Bahrain seeks to develop programmes and policies that support the achievement of health goals at the local and global level. The Deputy Chairman of the Human Rights Committee of the Shura Council, Ali al Habi, delivered a speech at the closing session of the third forum for Chinese and Arab youth in China, where he stressed the need to strengthen strategic partnerships between all countries 
especially in the economic, political and social fields. He pointed out that Bahrain, through the royal visions of His Majesty the King, seeks to strengthen its relations with all countries, foremost of which is China. He pointed out that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, and with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, has been keen to build distinguished relations with China and to consolidate the Bahrain's role in supporting the bonds of friendship and cooperation between China, the Arabic and GCC countries.